Hello everybody, welcome to Sean's page. Sean here, or maybe it's not Sean. It is the Vostok Amphibian, the Russian diver's watch. I think it's an interesting watch and I think today I want to make a video and bring to you a $61 watch that many people really like and I happen to be in the camp of many people who really like this watch. So let's start with a few of the uh, the basics. This watch is 66 grams. I'm going to come out and pick it up. First I'm going to drop it and then I will pick it up. With this, with this strap, this is a Barton 18 millimeter strap. Um, what you're going to find a lot of people talking about with this watch is the strap that it comes with is garbage. And it is. Uh, I wanted to show you the strap, but what I did was as soon as I, I ordered this strap when I ordered this watch, same day. Um, the strap came in and I waited another few weeks for the watch to come here from, I'm just going to show you, watch this, I waited for the watch to come here from Russia. Look at the, look at the dial and how it's got kind of a sunburst effect. It's pretty neat. Um, the strap it came with was so bad, I removed the strap and it was a bracelet, a metal bracelet and threw it in the recycle bin and then I decided I would make this video and the recycle bin had been picked up and I don't have the strap or the, the bracelet to show you sorry so here's some stats on the watch it is 66 grams with this Barton 18 millimeter blue strap um, it, or 2.3 ounces the Diameter without the crown is 40 millimeters. Uh, I don't know what you would add for that crown. I didn't measure that. And actually, I don't measure it. I didn't measure anything other than its weight. The 40 millimeters came from the eBay site from which I purchased this watch. It is 12 millimeters thick, making it look kind of like a chunky monkey, but it's not so bad with this bubble back. It, it fits on the wrist nicely and its weight makes it a very nice watch to wear. I really like this watch a bunch. Um, lug width is 18 millimeters. And if you need extra proof of that, the strap is labeled 18. And they label their Barton straps in how many millimeters the lug width is. And it has this quick release little mechanism here to take off the uh, spring bar and change straps fast. It has a bi-directional rotating bezel, no clicks, just friction. And that's about the extent of the exterior. Let's talk about the watch and why I really dig this watch and why a lot of you should really dig this watch. And we'll do the loom test right now. People like the loom test. Now this is artificial light, so it's not the full spectrum. Let's give it a real quick charge uh, with a tactical flashlight and I will turn off the studio light. Now it's kind of daytime so it might not show up really bright but let's just turn this off real fast. There you go. There's some loom. So what difference does the loom make? No difference. That, sh that shot doesn't show you anything other than it glows. Will this loom last throughout a movie is the question you want to know or will it last throughout the evening. Can I see my watch when I wake up? Yes, you can see very faint loom, but it will last you through a movie and you should be able to tell what time it is in a dark theater. Okay, now, this is a dive watch. It is not ISO certified, meaning it hasn't been tested, each, each case has not been tested to its rated depth, 25% over its rated depth, and this watch is rated at 200 meters. One of the other things to be an ISO rated watch is a moving second hand. Why a moving second hand is important? So you can tell in complete darkness with a little glow that your watch is running. And it's got this nice red second hand. Really neat watch. It's called the Scuba Dude. If you go to eBay, you could type in Vostok, V-O-S-T-O-K, Scuba Dude, and there he is, scuba diving. And that is different than the Kamandirsky because the Kamandirsky is not as uh, deep is not as rated to go as deep and does not have a little scuba diver on it and some Russian stuff in here 31 jewels it has the 
date complication. Now, let's get on to some interesting things and why a lot of people dig this watch. One is this crystal. It is acrylic. It's soft. It scratches easy. A little dab of toothpaste and a rub. Just keep rubbing it around. Will take out any light superficial scratches. And it's rated at 200 meters so you can run this underwater and clean it with no problem. What's cool about this crystal is look at how tall it is. Look at the dome and the and how it changes the the look of the dial. It's kind of neat the distortion that it creates. But anyway, it's got this high edge. It's very tall. And what happens with this, as you go deep, the crystal pushes and it squeezes. The water pressure will actually squeeze the crystal deeper into the case, making this watch more waterproof. It gets its water resistance from the depth. And this back, it looks like a screw down back. And it kind of is. There's 200M, that's about the only thing you can read for 200 meters uh, if you're not Russian. This is all in Cyrillic, the whole thing. The front, let's see if you, if you can read that. Writing down here, it tells you all the, all the stuff. And the back tells you all the stuff. So, this is actually a two-piece back. This is a ring that screw, unscrews. Take off this little ring and then this back, there's a tab right there and a tab up here, right there, you can see it. So you can grab either tab and pull this back off. Now what happens is you can reuse the rubber seal. On a traditional or common screw down back, the whole thing turns. And so the watch stays in one place while the back turns and it grabs traction on the rubber gasket and will shear it. The top of the rubber gasket will move and the and the watch side of the rubber gasket will not move, causing this kind of a, a twist like this on the gasket, making it good for one use. This one, since you put this on top of the gasket and this ring screws down pushing even pressure all the way down from back to front, it moves this back this way without any turning of the rubber gasket, you can keep reusing the gasket. How genius. If you ever want to pop one open and take a peek, you can. And you can put the back on and screw this ring back down and it is good to go. You retain its water resistance rating. Um, I'm not going to do it because every time I've taken the back off of a watch, I've dropped it, I've knocked it off the table. I just did it the other night with a watch. It was an Invicta with this filth on the dial. Invicta makes this, it was just a filthy dial on a Swiss made or Swiss movement Invicta. Great watch, filthy dial. I dismantled it, took it apart, cleaned the dial, had it all perfect, went to put it back, dropped it on the floor, broke an ETA movement. Oh well, learned that lesson. Now on to the crown and the genius of the crown. It is a screw down crown. Let's unscrew it. Now its first position is nothing. Look at that, it just flops around. How does it, look at it. Its first position is winding. I can wind it and it's also automatic. But the crown is floppy. Its second position is set the time. But the crown has this floppiness. The crown has a clutch mechanism that makes it look like it's broken. Uh, was this the time? So the crown is never a part of the watch. So if there's a hit to the crown, after it's all been screwed down, it is not connected to the stem that goes into the watch and connects to the movement. Pretty neat, huh? Instead of a crown protector, they separated the crown from the movement um, by that little clutch mechanism that gives it this floppiness. In order for it to work, you kind of have to pull it that way and put an outward. Right now it's just going to spin. If I have an outward pressure, I wind it. I get into the again to the set the date. It just spins. Nothing happens. 
outward pressure sets the day or the time. And the time, this is the pain in the butt about this watch. You have to go. So today is the 26th. If this watch were dead on the 27th, I would have to 24 hours, go 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all the way through until I got to the 26th and set the time again. But what they did was if I back it up, let's do this. I'm going to have to, this is going to be, a, this is for science. This is for you guys. If I keep going, 6 o'clock, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it's going to click to 27. Boom. And it does a fast snap. Maybe you heard it go click. So I go to 1, 2 a.m., back it up to about 9 p.m. I'm going to go forward. And I will go. Do I have to go to 3? Yeah, I think I got to go to 3. I haven't done this. I kept it running since I got it. Go to nine, 11. Well, do I have to go to four? Sorry, this is lame. It's supposed to be the fast way around. I gotta go to, I think it's nine. Oh wait a minute, there. Let's see when the 27 gets centered again. Now I can click it to 28, go off to 3, come back. This is actually a little bit faster than dialing. See, it's off center. When it's centered, I can then advance the day again. Um, it's going to take a long time. It's a little bit faster than doing it uh, 24 hours uh, for a whole month, but it's still kind of a pain. So for you guys, I did that, and I will go, and I will redo it, and I will get it set back to the appropriate date. This is not hacking, so in other words, the second hand will keep um, marching forward when you have the stem pulled out. Other watches have a hacking, and I don't know if any of the Vostoks do. So there it is, the Vostok Amphibian uh, Diver's Watch. Alleged 200 meters, 660 feet depth. There are some videos on YouTube where they have taken these down to, I think, a thousand feet in a pressure chamber before the case broke. I don't have one here. I can't test it. What I can tell you is this has been underwater in the tub, under a couple feet of water, in the shower, in the sink. It's dry on the inside. It's not fogging up. So I think it's water resistant enough for day-to-day -day activities and you really can't beat this watch. It's so shiny looking and nice. Well, it doesn't look super great right there. Let's get a little cloth out here and just give this a little polish. There, it's a little better, a little nicer looking. It's got a nice polish to it. At $61, you know, you can't beat this watch. There's nothing out there on the market from anywhere. It's an in-house Russian 31 Joule movement. Go to eBay and buy one. You can find them on Amazon too. A little bit more money. I think they come faster. Um, from Russia, this will take you a few weeks to get it. Unless you're watching this video in Russia and you'll probably get it much sooner. I'm talking about, took me a few weeks to get it in the States. But it came, it was nice and safe, in a nice box with a plastic case, and uh, order your order bracelet while you're at it. This is a nice bracelet. A lot of people don't like the two, the same kind of color. Uh, I do, it's not so bad. So anyway, Vostok, Amphibian, buy one, enjoy it, you'll be a part of the Vostok Club, and I think I'm going to order another one with a different color dial, with a little scuba dude up here. They move him around the dial a little bit. Right now it's obviously in the middle, but I can get him up a little bit. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please feel free to give a thumbs up and like this video, subscribe and click the little bell icon and you will be notified on all future postings that I make. 
the most doc amphibian. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, it took a long time to review this little watch, but um, I think you'll like it. I think I think you'll enjoy buying one, and I hope this helped make your decision. Take care. Bye bye.